Hi everyone and welcome to NMC1. Today we will be looking at phase diagrams. Basically phase diagrams are diagrams that are used to predict phase compositions as well as the microstructures that would be expected during a heat treatment process. Now there are some terminologies that you need to be familiar with. The first one is the solubility limit the solubility limit basically is the limit to which a specific alloy element has after dissolving a certain amount into another element for example if you have a cup of water cold water and you put sugar inside the water and you stir there's a certain amount of sugar that will dissolve in the cup of water as you continue to pour more sugar there will come a point where the sugar doesn't dissolve anymore the sugar precipitates instead at the bottom of the glass so at that point where that starts happening that's called the solubility limit solubility limit also in that context can be affected by temperature with water that is at a high temperature you find that there is a higher solubility limit meaning that the hot water of the same volume as the cold water can dissolve more sugar than the cold water secondly the invariant point that's where you have a number of phases the invariant point is actually where multiple phases phase fields and the phase boundaries meet this is called the invariant point invariant point in this context this is a unary phase diagram which just has water as the constituent moving along we have the binary phase diagram basically binary phase diagram the binary systems which have two alloying elements two alloying elements in this case you can see that we have the binary system of copper and nickel and the composition is represented in terms of the nickel meaning that on this side you have zero amount of nickel that means it's a hundred percent copper copper is at a hundred percent and this side copper is zero percent at the extreme when nickel is a hundred percent so if you would have to get the melting point for this for each of these you'd have to go where they are hundred percent for copper you come here you find that the melting point is 1085 degrees celsius and for nickel this is where you have hundred percent nickel with the melting point you have 1453 degrees celsius and the you have different phase boundaries phase fields phase boundaries which have phase fields this is a liquid phase field this is an alpha phase phase field and you have the phase field that has both the alpha phase and the liquid phase the phase field boundary which separates the liquid from the alpha phase plus the liquid phase is called the liquidus line. Liquidus line, and you also have what is called the solidus line. Solidus line is this one, it's separating the solid, the solid alpha phase. Meaning this is a solid phase and 
with the mixture of the solid phase and the liquid. So this is the soldier's line, this is the liquid's line. And then what is important in terms of these phase diagrams is to know the liver rule. The liver rule rule which is used to calculate the amount of phases present in a binary system or a ternary system or any kind of system so it's actually sometimes even titled the inverse inverse liver rule the inverse liver rule because for you to be able to determine the amount of phase you need to be able to calculate the opposite lever of what you're looking for for example let's look at the blue line you have the specific composition that let's say zero the composition which will have to be given to you and then on the boundary line on the right hand side you also have a composition alpha on the left you have a composition of a liquid and then this phase boundary is the phase boundary of the alpha phase is a phase boundary for the liquid so if you're looking for the amount of liquid you would actually use the difference between the composition you have and the composition at the phase boundary of the alpha phase and if you're looking for the amount of alpha phase you will use the composition that you have the difference between the composition that you have and the composition of the liquid phase so for example if you're looking for the amount of alpha phase you would say C0 minus CL over the entire difference, which would be C alpha minus CL multiplied by 100. For the liquid, you do the same, which would be C alpha minus C0 over composition at alpha minus the composition at the liquid multiplied by 100 or well, since they make up 100 percent once you get the other let's say you get this one first you can just say 100 minus this one then you'll get the other one for example the amount of phase of alpha plus the amount of phase of liquid is equals to 100 percent that's what I basically mean. Now, the important thing to be able to calculate with the phase diagram or to determine is number one, the amount of phase. Amount of phase. That's the one we use the liver rule. And then the composition. Composition of phase. The composition of the phase is virtually the composition. You just try to draw a tie line for the specific. For example, now say they ask what is the composition of alpha at these original composition in terms of nickel. So what you will do at this specific temperature. For example, they give you the temperature, then you draw a tie line towards the alpha phase boundary, and then you determine what the composition would be. In this case, you can see that the composition of alpha at that original composition is this much, which is just alpha. This is about 44, something around 40, you know, 42, can say 42%. This is in terms of nickel, 42% nickel. 
that's the composition of base if they would say look for the composition of the liquid you just do the same on the boundary line of the liquid and then the third thing to be able to determine is the phases present the phases present you need to know which phases are present at a specific temperature for example you know that in the, within this phase field you have alpha within this phase field you have a, an alpha phase plus a liquid phase so those are the major things to know or the basics to be familiar with when it comes to phase diagram i'll see you in the next video and we'll do a few examples and develop some more theories